En el nombre del Padre, del Hijo y del Espíritu Santo. Amén. Amén. Letare Sunday, as symbolized by the use of rose vestments instead of purple ones, has a distinct note of hope. <coughs> the Mass text is permeated also with references to Jerusalem. To it refer the verses of the introit, the reading of St. Paul to the Galatians, the gradual and tract, and the communion prayer. And hence, we could say that the keynote of this Mass is the idea of hope and Jerusalem. Now, this is very congruous. <coughs> For St. Thomas says that Jerusalem, in the mystical sense, represents or means the Church. Sometimes the Church militant, <coughs> and, that, and sometimes, in a higher sense, the Church triumphant. <clears throat> Hence, Jerusalem is intimately associated with hope. For the Church, militant's end and purpose is to populate the Church triumphant. <coughs> the, church's militant, the Church militant's function is, to use the words of St. Peter, to regenerate us unto a lively hope. <clears throat> that is to say, to make us partakers, chiefly by the sacraments of the life of grace, in order to make us partakers, after succeeding in the combats of this life, of the life of glory, which is eternal life. <clears throat> the Church militant then is transitory and ordered at, as to its end and purpose to the Church triumphant. In a similar way, <clears throat> as a child is brought forth by his mother, that he may attain the perfect, perfect life one day of the adult. <clears throat> as St. Thomas says, says it succinctly, <coughs> We are thus generated in the present Church militant in order that we may attain to the triumphant. Thus, that Jerusalem which is above, of which St. Paul speaks today, <coughs> refers in the highest mystical sense to heaven, the heavenly Jerusalem of which the Apostle St. John says, And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice from the throne saying, Behold the tabernacle of God with men, and he will, de he will dwell with them and they shall be his people, and God himself with them shall be their God. <clears throat> and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and death shall be no more, nor mourning, nor <coughs> crying, nor sorrow shall be any more, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat on the throne <coughs> said, Behold, I make all things new. <clears throat> the Jews in the Old Testament were commanded by God to do pilgrimages to the holy city of his temple, as it were, to see the dwelling place of God. The journey was long and required a hard ascent to the mount on which Jerusalem stands. The pious pilgrims encountered many hardships and fatigues while they ascended on foot the steep paths. But the hope to see Jerusalem, which was holy because in it was the house of the Lord, the temple, this hope gave them the strength to overcome all hardships 
and difficulties. <laughs> and so when the weaker were tempted to stop in their ascent, the stronger would encourage them, come, stand, stand up and walk. I already see through the mist, through the mist, the holy city. I see the glittering of the temple. A few more efforts and we will rejoice at seeing the beauty of the temple of God. <coughs> Psalms 121 and 123, quoted in today's Mass, belong to a class of Psalms which are called gradual Psalms. <coughs> they are so-called from the Latin word gradus, which means a step or a degree. <coughs> St. Robert Bellarmine, commenting on the Psalms, notes that according to some, these steps refer to allude to the ascent of the Jews from Babylon to Jerusalem, according to others, to the climbing of the 15 steps that led to the Temple of Jerusalem. But then the Holy Doctor writes, But whatever it may be of these opinions, these ascents from Babylon to Jerusalem, or by the steps to the Temple, were figures of the ascent of the elect, who by the, step, by the steps or degrees of virtues, and especially charity, ascend from the Valley of Tears to the heavenly Jerusalem, and it is, continues the Holy Doctor, and it is of this ascent that the Holy Ghost spoke above all. Certainly, he continues, these psalms are full of affections towards God, and are proper of those who understand that they are pilgrims and exiles in the land of their enemies, and at some times they mourn the sufferings of the exile. At other times, they sigh for the rest of the fatherland, but always arouse themselves to ascend higher and to advance in the way of the Lord. <clears throat> and thus, in the introit, the gradual psalm says, I rejoice, I rejoiced at the things that were said to me, we shall go into the house of the Lord. This, as we saw in a material sense, could have been sung perhaps by a pilgrim who rejoiced when they told him that they were going up to the temple of Jerusalem. But in the higher mystical sense, intended principally by the Holy Ghost, it expresses the joy which is caused in the soul of the Christian by the theological virtue of hope. As if one were saying, it was told to me by God who rebuilt it and by Holy Mother Church who proposed it to me, that unless we willfully lose the state of grace, we will go soon to heaven, God's special abode. <clears throat> Thus, for example, Saint Dotto, Abbot, Saint, Saint Turibius, Archbishop of Lima, Saint Francis Solano, and Saint Peter of Alcantara recited this, this very <coughs> verse of the psalm when they understood they were about to die, in order to express their joy at the hope of going soon to heaven. When Saint Camillus de Lelis relapsed into his final illness, his life was despaired of by the doctors. When he heard them saying that, he said, I rejoiced at the things that were said to me. We shall go into the house of the Lord. <laughs> now Jerusalem means a vision of peace. That is the, the meaning of the name. And this fits the Church tri Triumphant. 
according to what is said of Jerusalem in the Son, who, God, hath placed peace in thy borders, peace in thy borders, and also to that of, us, of Isaiah, and my people shall sit in the beauty of peace. The heavenly Jerusalem, <clears throat> that is heaven, to where we hope to attain, will be for us the true vision of peace. For only God can <coughs> give us true peace, and that perfect, absolute, and inadmissible peace that will fill us to our overflow, that can only be attained by the beatific vision by which we shall see God himself in his infinite beauty. We will also have ineffable joy and peace in the sight, at the sight and company of our Lord, of our Lady, of all the saints and the elect, of our guardian angel and all the angels according to that which is said of Jerusalem in the sun. The dwelling in thee is, as it were, of all rejoicing. <clears throat> of that true and, and heavenly Jerusalem, and of her blessed inhabitants, among whom we firmly hope to be one day, Isaiah <coughs> says, For th thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will bring upon her, Jerusalem, as it were a river of peace, and as an overflowing torrent, the glory of the Gentiles. As one whom the mother caresseth, so will I comfort you, and you shall be comforted in Jerusalem. It is true that to reach our Jerusalem, we must go through a valley of tears. But amidst the tears of the exile, we must, as St. Paul tells us, rejoice in hope. <laughs> rejoice indeed, because soon we will leave this land of exile, which is so full of sin, hatred, heresy, quarrel, sicknesses, pain and sorrow, that is rightly called a valley of tears. But if we keep God's commandments, which are light and easy to keep by His grace, just a few more, more years we shall soon experience what God Himself has promised. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and death shall be no more nor mourning, nor crying, nor sorrow shall be any more, for the former things are passed away. <laughs> Believing then in the promises of God and firmly hoping in the help of His grace, let us keep with the saints our gaze and our heart in the beauty of the heavenly Jerusalem, where we hope to enter. And with the same saints, let us joyfully say, even in this valley of tears, I rejoiced at the things that were said to me. We shall go into the house of the Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. <clears throat>